Hi, my name is Josh Evilsizer. Today I'm going to show you how to write an OER using AI. Are you watching the right video? Well, are you a civilian manager, military officer, or NCO? Are you interested in an AI-powered performance evaluation writing assistant? Then yes. Questions answered in this video. How to use AI to complete an employee performance evaluation. I'm going to show you how to do this by demonstrating with a military officer evaluation report and I'm going to complete the rater remarks and the senior rater remarks. And then we're going to end with the most important question, why should you care? Let's jump right in. Use AI to complete an employee performance evaluation. This is going to take just a minute of going over the form formatting so that we're on the same page. All right, so on the, here we have a draft performance evaluation. Let's assume the employee has completed a what I did this year and is submitting that to their manager. And let's assume the manager is completing a different form, a completed performance evaluation. So this is what happens in the military. The names are just a little bit different. And I'm going to use these forms to demonstrate how with a little bit of AI magic, we can have the AI magic complete the forms for us or draft them for us. Because of course, we're going to go back over them and fine tune them so they're actually observed and completed by us, but we're gonna let the AI draft it. So completed OER support form. So an OER support form is that draft form the military officer completes and submits to their rater and says, these are the things that I said I was gonna do. And when I say rater, I mean supervisor. These are the things that I said I was gonna do and these are the things that I did. Please go complete my performance evaluation, which they complete. And it's called an OER, officer evaluation report. So just one more time, draft performance evaluation is submitted by the employee. The supervisor completes the performance evaluation. And in military terms, it's called the completed OER support form or OER support form. And that is used to generate the OER or officer evaluation report. Okay, we're gonna use these examples and now we're gonna get started. So this completed OER support form is completed at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year. What does that mean? Well, at the beginning of the year, the employee fills out the front and back of this form, and we're gonna focus on this portion first. So on the left-hand side, objectives. On the right-hand side, accomplishments. Objectives, accomplishments. Objectives, accomplishments. Why am I talking about this so much? So on the left-hand side, the objectives are filled out at the beginning of the year, and on the right-hand side, the accomplishments are filled out at the end of the year. What we want to do as the supervisor is take what they said they were going to do and what they actually did and then smoosh those two bullets together to create a narrative. And this is a summary narrative of everything they did across the year. So it's like the top of the umbrella. It's the summary statement of everything this employee did over the year. And I'm going to call it the summary narrative. And this is going to go on the front of the form of the completed OER, the summary narrative. All right. And it looks something like this. I spent all that time explaining the left and the right and the summary narrative because we're going to do that six more times. On the back of the form, the, the employee has filled out different sections of the form. So objectives, what I'm going to do. Accomplishments, what I plan to do. Character. So they've done that for character, presence, intellect, leads, develops, and achieves what I want to do and what I have done, objectives and accomplishments. And we want to take each one of those objectives and accomplishments and we want to have AI magically smoosh those together and give us a narrative for each of these sections, a draft narrative. Remember, we're going to go over this at the end and we're going to make it ours, but we're going to let AI make it easier for us. There she is. All right. So here we go. This is the finished OER. This is what we're shooting for, that summary narrative right here. Character, presence, intellect, leads, develops, and achieves. This is the actual finished form. And it's going to look something like this when we're all done. That final narrative at the top and then all the six different components uh, on page two right there. Okay. Now we need to provide examples. I talked about this in my previous prompting basics videos. This is the sixth and culminating video. Check out the video description below uh, or the playlist this video should be in. Uh, but you see here on the left hand side, summary narrative, character, presence, intellect, leads, develops, achieves. So this is just one example of what each of those smooshed together narratives should look, 
sound feels not the right word but tone and style it hey this is what right looks like this is just one example well we're going to provide three examples because i have spent much of my career logging this stuff so i'm just going to go ahead and take three of the best ones and you see one through three right there and i titled it example oer verbiage just make a mental note of that because when i upload these i want this to make sense I want the name of this file to make sense to you. So example OER verbiage equals these three examples. All right, next, completed OER support form. So we've received, the employee has given to us a completed support form. Now in military terms, we just go into EES and we download this thing. Page one and two, it's all done. The objectives and the accomplishments, all that stuff that I laid out before, it's all done. We're gonna feed this to the AI as well. We're gonna feed both of these, these, these examples and the completed support form. Now let's make the magic happen. So here we are in Claude. Why are we using Claude, Josh? Well, 200,000 token context window. That's about 350 pages or a book. So the ability for it to absorb a lot of information and think about it uh, and not forget some of it is really good. Uh, Claude is also also the strongest at reasoning and writing and one of the best creative writers. And if you've ever had to write an officer evaluation report, creative writing is an important skill. In any event, let's go ahead and get started with our prompt to write our rater remarks of this officer evaluation report or employee performance evaluation. So I just wanted to highlight the prompts that you're gonna see here are available in the Google Doc that you saw me start out with at the beginning of this video, which is linked in the description down below. Uh, so you, you can follow along the video and that's good to do, but just know that you can access the document so you can just copy all of it if you want to. Um, video description down below. All right, I've talked a lot about context before. Context, pers context persona, audience, output including those components are key for the model to understand where we're coming from and what we're trying to do. So I'm going to move through this bit by bit here. And before I start reading this, I want to upload the pieces that I told you about earlier. So we're going to go to the upload function here. Hopefully these are ready. Yep. Example OER verbiage one, two, three. And we also want to upload the completed OER support form. So Captain America's completed OER, nope, OER support form, there we go. So those are the four documents that we said that we were gonna upload. So go ahead and upload those. All right, and that OER support form, remember, is the information the employee has given us, and now we're trying to complete the OER or their evaluation report with this prompt to develop the smooshed summary narratives. So here we go. All right, context. Assume the persona of an Ohio Army National Guard Lieutenant Colonel named Josh Evilsizer. Let me go ahead and just scroll up here. Whose job is to complete a company grade officer evaluation report. And then I put in parentheses OER so that I can use the acronym OER from here on out. I've defined it for the model in accordance with the correct Army regulation. All right. You will use a completed DA form 67. I'm putting this in here because it's on the form. And so the model will see that. I'm trying to just be as precise and clear everywhere I go throughout this prompt. So there's just no questions in the model's mind, figuratively, of course, about what I'm asking or telling it to do or what I'm asking or telling it to look at. So you will use a completed DA form 67-10-1A, also known as an OER support form, because that's how I'm going to refer to it from here on out to complete a company grade OER for the soldier named in the OER support form. So real quick, persona, audience is people that are familiar with this DA form, right? That need to, need to maintain or adhere to the requirements in this form and this regulation. There's not a lot of audience here, so I'm, I'm digging a little bit, but persona audience output. And we're gonna talk a lot about the output here in a minute. Okay. Um, but I have talked about some of it here. I've given it, I've given it a kind of foreshadowing, but I'm, I'm going to be clear in the instructions. But I have told it you're going to complete a company-grade OER for their soldier named in the OER support form. For their soldier named in the OER, that's important. So Captain America is who we're using here, and I'm telling it it's that person that you're going to, 
we don't want to leave anything undone. When this thing is done, it needs to have all the right information, all the right names. And so that's why I'm telling it right here for the soldier named in the OER support form. So grab that person's name as you summarize all this information as well. Okay. You will also refer to previous examples of completed OERs written by Lieutenant Colonel Josh Evelsizer so that you can replicate the same writing style and tone used in the example OERs. So again, just another look forward about what you're going to do, giving it a lot of context of what's going on here, right? What is going on here? And this is, this is all context. All right, references. This is the stuff I explained before, kind of slowed it down a little bit, so I'm going to slow it down one more time. Example, so these are our references. Example, OER verbiage one, OER verbiage two, three, and the completed OER support form. So I bulletized them. We've learned this, right? We want to organize our prompt so that everything is super clear to the model. Well, here I go, one, two, three, and four. Here's four things you should be looking at. Number one, example OER verbiage one. Example OER verbiage one. I've used the exact same naming convention everywhere. So right here in the file name, and then when you open the file in the document itself, it says, it says example OER verbiage. So the model has no doubt this is exactly what I'm telling it to look at to replicate style and tone. Do I need to be this precise? Probably not, but it just leaves no room for error if you're organized and you are precise. Okay, example OER verbiage one, two, and three, and then the completed OER support form. Again, that is the form the employee has completed. Here's my objectives, here's my accomplishments. And so we're gonna feed all those to the model and it's gonna smoosh those together. All right, instructions. I'm trying to do a progressive reveal here, but I'm not doing a great job. So your job is to follow and complete the steps as listed below. So your job, so again, context, persona audience output, references, and then instructions. Instructions come last. We have recently learned if you put the instructions last, your results are noticeably better. It's a thing. All right. Your job is to follow and complete the steps as listed below. And we also know that if we list steps sequentially and we chunk them, and I, when I keep saying we know, it's because I've explained all this in previous videos. So if you haven't seen them, please check them out. Uh, they'll walk you through all the best stuffs with prompting. Anyhow, here we go. Step one. We know this is important to include the bullet and to chunk our steps. So review each of the example OERs, example OERs one through three in parentheses, to understand writing style and tone. And by the way, I'm going to pause for a second here you'll see that I didn't use the word example OER verbiage. I should have, because I was trying to be precise. However, I've run this and it works, so I'm not changing it now, but just the goal whenever I write these, anytime I'm referencing something is to use the exact words of the file name or the title of the file that I'm giving it, just so there's absolutely no ambiguity in the model's mind of what you're asking it to do or look at or reference. All right. So review each of the example OERs. So example OER, OER verbiage one, two, and three. Review those to understand the writing style and tone only. Being careful not to extract any specific details from these example OERs as they are only an example. So these three example OER verbiage, right? These are from OERs that I've written before and that I've anonymized, but it was grabbing information from those and injecting it into the OER we are trying to complete. Well, we don't want to do that. We just want it to look at it and understand the tone and the style, understand it, and then move over to the support form and use that to create the OER. Well, it was grabbing stuff from the examples and putting it in the OER. So I just told it not to, and it stopped. All right. Review the completed OER support form. So look at the, the data that I'm giving you, the before and the after, because you're going to smoosh it together. <laughs> Using the completed OER support form, do the following. On page one, review the bullet points in the section titled, and I capitalize these so it, it reads exactly the way the form does because the form has all caps. So indicate your major performance objectives. So on page one, review the objectives. On page one, review the bullet points in the section titled, list significant contributions and accomplishments. So one, review the objectives. Two, review the accomplishments. Using the objectives and accomplishments bullets that you just reviewed, create a page one summary narrative. Now this is that high level summary narrative we talked about that goes on the first page. It tells everything they did in kind of this 
succinct summary. So page one summary narrative that can be used to complete the OER for the soldier named, I did this earlier, right? The soldier named in the completed OER support form. So grab the name of Captain America and put it in there. All right, so using the objectives and accomplishments you just reviewed, create the page one summary. So review the objectives, review the accomplishments, create the summary. Then on page two, we were very careful telling her what to do for the summary. And now I can just kind of jump. I can say on page two, follow the same process to create a summary narrative for each of the following sections, character, presence, intellect, leads, develops, and achieves. So we tell it what to do with the front page very carefully. And then we just tell it on the back page, do the same thing with those six different sections that I covered earlier, which are character, presence, intellect, leads, develops, and achieves. All right. And then finally, before we launch this thing, think step by step. You're telling this thing, just go step by step and ask any questions you, you have before starting. I found both of these to be a very good TTP, tactic, technique, or procedure, or a best practice in civilian terms. Let's launch this thing, shall we? <laughs> Usually it asks me, hey, I understand you want me to do this thing. Is this true? I will then review using the information, the narratives I draft you've written. Please confirm if I have the right understanding. Once it spits out the seven the seven narratives that we need, which is the, the summary, and then each of the six different components, as it's doing, uh, we will take those. So there's character, which is next. The first it gave us a summary, then character, then presence, so on and so forth. We will take these components or these different narratives and we'll plug them into the completed, or what will be the completed OER, because we're writing the OER, right? So we'll, in military technical terms, we'll open up EES and we'll, we're gonna fill out that OER with the information that Claude has given us. All right, so we've completed the first section of the OER, which is the Raider comments. Now, because we are a good subordinate, we are gonna draft some senior Raider comments for our senior Raider. So, our, so we're the boss filling out the subordinates uh, evaluation, right? Their performance evaluation. Now we're writing the comments that our boss would be writing as well. Because in an officer evaluation report, there is the employee, then you have the raider or the supervisor, and then the boss's boss. And so that's what we're completing next. I've jumped right in, and I didn't mean to do that. I tabbed over too many. The next slide here, we're looking at that completed OER. So we took the bullets from here, or the summary, or the narratives. I need to stay consistent with my terminology. And we filled out the OER from the raider's perspective. But what is left is to take these narratives and we're gonna smoosh them one more time. <laughs> we're gonna smoosh them all together to write a senior Raider narrative. Now the difference here is we are taking performance bullet points and we are writing a narrative that speaks to the employee's potential. So the model needs to get creative and speak about potential. But it's not gonna be hard for it to do that. And it's gonna look something like this because we're gonna give it examples. And surprise, surprise, Josh Evelsizer has spent his entire career saving all these bullet points. And so you probably can't read them super well, uh, but they start off here with a bunch of warrant officers uh, because as a aviation battalion commander, I rated many uh, and I got very good at writing senior raider narratives and I saved all of them. But it's not just warrant officers, it's warrant officers, lieutenants, captains and majors, uh, and there are nine pages of example senior raider comments. And I didn't mean to do a knife hand there, but in any event, uh, this file name will be example senior raider comments. So I just wanna familiarize you with one of the things we're gonna upload because we gotta provide examples, right? Again, one of the things we've learned in my prompting basics videos. So example senior raider comments is one of the files or examples we're gonna provide. And then completed OER, that OER that we just finished, right? We're gonna provide that as well because we got to have the six narratives and the one on the front page to smoosh together to create the final senior Raider narrative. Here's where we jump into the magic. So context, persona, audience output. Assume the persona of an same stuff as before, basically, whose job it is to complete the senior Raider portion. And I get very specific here 
part six senior rater in all caps, just like it looks on the form. So whatever form you're using, if you're taking this and creating a, you know, or you're filling out a different form, just make sure everything's precise and specific and the model won't get confused. Uh, of a company grade officer evaluation report, OER, DA form 67-10-1 in accordance with the correct army regulation. All right, so persona, that's important. And some of the audience in there as well, people that are using or need to adhere to Army Regulation 623-3. You will use a completed OER, so we're giving a little more context of what, it's, what it can expect to see, to complete, so what it's gonna do, it's output, senior rater comments on potential for the soldier named in the completed OER. Here we've hinted you're gonna grab the name of the soldier in the completed OER, that's who you're completing it for. You will also refer to the example senior rater comments. That's pages one through nine that I showed you earlier that we're gonna upload to help it get the job done. Let's go ahead and do that now. So the completed OER, which we've downloaded from EES, technical, compo technical component of this for those actually trying to complete an OER. So completed OER, there it is. And I should have done both documents. So we're going to jump back in here and grab these example senior rater comments. There we go. And now we're in the references section. Completed OER. And again, to give the, the DA form number so it knows exactly what it's looking at is correct. Uh, example senior rater comments. Both of these are uploaded right here. Now we're jumping into the, instruct, in, into the instructions. Your job is to follow and complete the steps as listed below. Just like before, bulletized steps. We chunk it out, boom, 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 boom. So just follow each of the steps and there's no confusion. Um, what's the alternative? Well, one giant paragraph that you've written, right? And bullets just make it crystal clear what goes in what order and helps you not forget important details. So review the example senior rater comments. That's right here to understand writing style and tone only and noting the following requirements. Observe how each example specifically focuses on the future potential of the soldier and discusses the soldier's accomplishments only in light of their future potential. So headquarters DA will kick these things back if you start writing about what a soldier did. But you can write about what they did or, or allude to it when you're talking about their future potential. All right. And Claude is smart enough to do this, which is just great. Do not extract any specific details from these example comments as they are only an example. Review the completed OER, DA Form 67-10-1. Specifically, review the narrative in the comments section of Part 4B. So this is telling it to review that summary narrative on page 1. It's a little confusing here because you can't see the form but I've been very specific. So comments is written just like it's written on the form with the colon after it. Uh, and then part 4B. So this is again, the bottom of that first page where the summary narrative has been completed. I'm telling it to review that. Review the narrative in each of these sections. So on in each of these sections. So on page two, and I've written them just like they are in the form. C.1 bowlegs or parentheses, however you, however you want to say it, character. C.2, bow legs, or parentheses, presence, intellect, leads, develops, and achieves. So grab the narrative from page one, grab each of the six narratives from page two, then do this. Synthesize the information across all of the narratives to provide a single narrative for part six, the senior rater comments on potential, congruent with the provided example senior rater comments. So take part one, the summary narrative from page one, all the six narratives from page two, smoosh them all together, congruent with the provided example senior rater comments, which is right here. So look at what I've written before and make it the same or similar. Finally, the thing that we end, or I end, all prompts with, think step by step to execute this assignment and ask any questions you have before starting. So we're gonna go ahead and launch this so that we can complete the senior rater comments for this OER draft that we are drafting up. Some little caveats there. Please let me know if these assumptions are correct. Claude is always on the money, so I'm just gonna go ahead and write yes. But we're always, it's always a throw of the dice. Here's my draft, boom. And it even, it even puts in the right bullets and everything, which is really cool. Uh, Claude, super sharp. And you can see that 
I didn't even ask for it, but it gave me the three future successive assignments, which is on the form. And this is not always spot on, but this is not bad. Um, and here you can see it's given me too much information, which I enjoy. I take all of it and I take the best parts of it and just plug it into the summary narrative. You're good to go. All right, we are done. So this is the final piece. This would be plugged into the senior rater narrative. Hit submit to headquarters DA on the due date again, and you're done. So like I promised, the so what? Why should you care? Well, why should you learn AI, you say? Well, <laughs> learning to prompt AI models in the 2020s is the typing class of the 90s. Now is your chance to learn a skill using a technology that will soon be ubiquitous. Don't be like the olds that were left behind in the 90s that didn't learn to type. The ones you see now, hunting and pecking, <laughs> on their keyboards. Don't be that person. <clears throat> AI is the future and the future is now. And the time to learn is today. <clears throat> Not because AI will replace humans, but because humans that use AI will replace humans that don't. And the best way to get good at AI is by using it. Thank you for watching. If I've inspired you to try this, or if you do it and you're successful, let me know. Love that stuff. It's super fun to hear and I appreciate your feedback. Don't forget, linked goodness below, all the prompts, all the previous videos, yada, yada, yada. Like, subscribe, share this with somebody else that would enjoy it or could use it, or needs help writing better OERs. You know who you are. As always, if you leave questions, I will leave answers. Now please go and be productive.